welcome to AF Math and Engineering. If you're enjoying this video on our channel, please hit the like button and the subscribe button down below. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, welcome back. Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. Uh, this video is going to be on the moment area method. It's a pretty tricky problem, and um, we're just going to go over it. It can get, tend to get a little messy when it's kind of uh, tricky like this with the elastic curve, but we're going to do our best. Yeah, so uh, just a, a quick note, by the way, if this is the first video that you've um, seen from us or, you know, you're just learning the, the moment area method, don't start with this question. It's kind of tricky. Go back to the first two that we did, and I'll leave a link for those down below. So um, we're asked to find theta A and delta C. We have uh, modulus, and I left this uh, formula here from the, the, the last question. Um, so if you don't understand what this formula is, go back. I'll explain it a little bit, um, but I'm not going to go over it too much. And we are going to be using this, obviously. So we have this beam. We have uh, two different I values, we have, and we have a hinge here. And this hinge is really going to change the question. Let's just start right here. We have the M over EI diagram. And I just gave that to you. Essentially, it's just the moment diagram divided by EI. The trick here is that for this portion, you're going to need to divide by 2i, and um, it's going to give you 100 over ei. So that's the trick. But I suggest trying to draw that on your own and see if you can get the same values that I did. I, I pause and try and do that, and then continue on with the question. So first, we're going to draw the elastic curve. So um, we're going to draw the elastic curve, and then we're going to look for our theta a and our delta c. Okay. So first, um, as we can see, we have a positive bending here. So we have this curvature like this. So we're going to start by drawing the elastic curve like so. Now, when we get to C, um, what, what a hinge does, an internal hinge, is it causes an inflection point in the elastic curve. So the curvature is going to reverse. It's going to change, and it's going to start coming up here now. Now, as we head towards a support, what you need to understand, and this is kind of where the understanding comes in. Like In a test, this is a great question because it tests your understanding. And you need to understand that uh, the distance from the beam here to the elastic curve is the deflection. So at a support, obviously the deflection in the y direction is zero. And as such, the elastic curve needs to pass through the ax the, the origin at that point. It needs to pass through the, the beam's axis. So when we get to a support, we know that that's kind of like a hint that we we need to pass through the axis at that point. So we're going to keep going. okay? And we have a negative moment down here. So we have this curvature. And then we're going to go back down here to the support because it has to be zero. And that's our elastic curve. So that, that can even be tricky if, if that's asked in the exam. You know, you, you need to know how to draw the elastic curve. You need to know that the hinge causes an inflection point as well. So because of this inflection point at point C, we now kind of have two separate portions of the beam. We can't evaluate the left side by looking at the right and vice versa. So we're going to have to kind of solve it in two parts. So we're going to first find uh, delta C, and we're going to do that using the right side of the equation. Okay, so... The first step always kind of choose our reference point for our tangent line. So we're going to draw a tangent line at one of these uh, supports here. And from there, we're going to find uh, a bunch of different things out that we're going to be able to uh, use to solve this question. So I'm going to choose D and where to draw the tangent and uh, the strategies to kind of solve these. Uh, it comes with practice. So don't be discouraged if you don't understand. Just do lots of practice problems and figure it out. But from D, and I'm going to show you why we chose D in a second. Uh, we know that this is theta d, okay? And on the other side, this is also theta d. So we know that those two angles are equivalent. Now, if you remember from the, uh, the second moment area theorem, which is this formula up here, okay? The integration of the m over ei diagram, and these two subscripts, we have delta ba. So delta, the first subscript, is the point where we're going to be taking the moment about, and that's where the deviation is, is measured from. And then the second subscript, A, for example, is where the tangent is being drawn. So if we're trying to find, and, and this integrate, this, this quantity here, the moment area of that part of the M over EI diagram, is the distance from the tangent to the elastic curve. And for this triangle here, we need to solve for theta D. Once we solve for theta D, we're going to come over here, and we're going to look for our delta C. Our delta C is this quantity here, this entire quantity. But this entire quantity is made up of these two quantities here the distance from the tangent to the elastic curve, and the distance from the beam to the, the tangent. Those are two quantities that we, we need to solve for. So first, let's find theta d, and then we can find those. And the way we find theta d is we look from the right side of d, and we come over here, and we have our delta ed here. Okay. So the delta ed is going to be the moment area of the m over ei diagram between e and d about e, because e is the first letter in the subscript, and d is where the tangent is. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's solve for ed. And the reason why we're solving for ED and how we can find theta D from that is we have this relation here. We have theta D is equal to 
um, opposite over adjacent. And we say that tan theta is roughly equal to theta because of the small angle theorem, because the angles that we're dealing with here are very, very small. So we have theta d is equal to opposite over adjacent, or adjacent is 15. Let's solve for delta ed now. Okay, so we're going to use this formula here. And so we have 1 over ei, okay, and we're going to find the moment area of ed about e. So we have this right here, okay, this square. So we have 15 feet times 150, okay, and then times the distance from the centroid of this shape to e, which is going to be 15 divided by 2 or 7.5, okay, and we're going to add the, uh, the moment area of this triangle here. So we have 200 minus 150 is the height, so that's going to be 50 times 1 half, and then we're going to multiply that by the base, which is 15, and we're going to multiply by this distance at times the distance to the centroid, which is uh, 15 times 2 over 3, which is going to be 10, okay, and this is going to give us a value of 20,625, and the units for that are kip feet cubed over EI. Cool. So now that we have this value, this quantity here, what we can do is we can come over here and we can solve for theta d. We have everything we need. So our theta d is simply, let's plug this value in, and we can keep EI just as is. We're going to have that theta d is equal to 1,375 over EI. Perfect. Well, now that we have this quantity, we know that they're equal on both sides because the curve is continuous at this point. So we have a relationship here, and I'm just going to kind of draw that relationship with this yellow line. So we have a triangle. Uh, we have this triangle here. Okay. So this little triangle here, this quantity between the elastic curve and the the beam, we can use this expression to see we did tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So that we can just solve for the opposite which is going to be uh, theta times the length, which is 10. So this quantity here, okay, is going to, and I'm just going to draw an arrow to it, okay, is going to be 10 theta d, okay? This quantity here is the distance from the elastic curve to the tangent, and that is simply just going to be delta cd, okay? So that's delta cd. So we're going to take the moment area about c of uh, cd of the m over ei diagram. We're going to add those together. That's going to give us our delta c. So we can find delta c now, which is equal to 10 theta d plus delta cd. And now let's find delta cd. Delta cd is simply just going to be, let's take the moment area of cd about c. So we have delta cd that, let's move the 1 over ei out. Okay. Now we're finding this quantity here. And we have uh, the moment area of this, so that's 200. So we're going to take 200 times the base, which is 10, okay, times 1 half. And then we have 10 times 2 over 3. So that's going to be multiplied by 20 over 3 to the centroid. Okay, and we get a delta CD of 6667 over EI. So now that we have that, we can just solve for our delta C, which is our first uh, requirement in the question. So delta C is just simply going to be 10. And let me just draw a line here. So we're going to have 10, and that is going to be times uh, th theta D. That's 1375 over EI plus the uh, delta CD that we just found, which is 6667 over EI. Go ahead and plug in the EI values now, and we should get that we have a delta C of 0 0.487 inches down. Perfect. Okay, cool. So that is our first question done. Now let's go and move on to theta A. So now that we have this delta C, now we can find theta A because we have this entire distance here to the elastic curve. However, we do need to find one more quantity. So first, let's draw a tangent at A, okay? So let's draw this tangent here at A, okay? Now we have this quantity here, okay? And we're gonna call that delta C A. Now delta C A is, like we said, it's going to be, uh, since the first subscript is C and the tangent is at A, it's gonna be the moment area of C A about C. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve for that. And we can see that once we solve for that, that the, our theta a is simply going to be opposite over adjacent. Opposite being this entire side of the triangle here, and our adjacent being this, uh, this length of 20. So that's going to be delta c plus delta c a over 20. Okay, so that's how we're going to solve for theta a. So now let's find this unknown quantity delta c a. Let's move the 1 over ei out. 
moment area of CA about C. Delta CA is simply, and we had 100 times 1 half, which is 20, the base of the triangle times 10. We're going to get the delta CA is simply 10,000 over EI. Finally, we can go ahead and we can plug in to this formula and find theta A, which is the final part of our problem. So we have delta C. We found that from the question before. Okay, so delta C, um, before we kind of simplified it, uh, if, we, if you take this value with the EIs, or you can use this and plug in EI, it's up to you. Okay, we're going to use this value is just 10 times this plus this. And we're going to use it in the over EI just so we don't get confused. And finally, we have our delta CA. A okay, delta CA is simply 10,000 over EI. And this whole thing is over the adjacent side, which is 20. Okay, and using that relationship, we're going to get our theta A. We have a value of 0 0.003 rad and that is in the clockwise direction cool and that's the end of the question the thing to note here is that we have when when um our x bar in this formula is always positive we're taking that left or right is positive so just take the direction of m if it's a positive moment then the your answer is going to be positive and if it's a negative moment it's going to be negative okay so i kind of discluded the signs here but that's a good uh, note to make Okay, uh, I hope that was um, helpful. I know it got kind of messy in the middle here, but I didn't really know how to uh, make it any cleaner because it's, you know, lots of tangents and lines in here. But I hope that you understood that. I hope that was good practice and um, look for a question like this in your midterm. Thanks for watching this.